Your host, Fred Arnold, on the Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce Business Spotlight. Um, well, welcome, Dr. Dr. Mufadal. Did I get that? Yeah, we nailed it. Mufadal Dehalwala. Perfect. Thank All you. right. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. From UCLA Health. Hey, got my UCLA mug here. We love it. My son blue just, blue. Yeah, my son just signed at UCLA. My daughter's going in or just graduating, so... Go Bruins. All part of the family. Love, we're going to talk about stress management. Um, board, you're, uh, you're board certified internal medicine. Um, I know you did um, internal medicine at UCLA, urgent care. Uh, but uh, I want to talk about stress management sure. because we all have a lot of it. And uh, In fact, my girl and I were talking about it last night and all the stress we hold, right, from work. And, you know, after long uh, hours of work, juggling, you know, your boss, juggling employees, juggling um, projects, juggling your family, juggling your children, all the activities that go with it. But the stress builds up in your body. And it's all about how we deal with it, which is what, what uh, you do. It sounds like an academic, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. It is an epidemic. Uh, you know, it's interesting. The World Health Organization called stress the global epidemic of the 21st century. Yeah. So, I mean, we live in this world now that is more interconnected. Everyone's on all the time, yep. and we're seeing stress in the office with everybody. It doesn't yep. matter if you're young, if you're older, if you're middle-aged. It used to be that stress used to affect um, you know, more middle-aged people because they had family stress and work stress, but now we're seeing it in younger people and older people. And, and I think we're seeing it. Uh, let's talk about work. Sure. Because in you know, Chamber of Commerce Business Hour, we're at work eight, nine, ten hours a day, right? Yeah. So we're you. there. We're sitting in a chair, and we're taking everybody's stuff, right? Whether it be easy stuff, hard stuff, yelling, frustrations, bad deals, meetings, how do you how do you approach that with the average citizen? Because they're going to want to maybe get some pain medicine or some Advil or let's start with that. Right. So the first thing to understand is that stress is naturally good for the body. Right. Your your body is conditioned to respond well to stress. That fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. So it's this really intricate system that your brain has connected with your endocrine system, your immune system. Your heart rate goes up. Your blood pressure goes up. You breathe faster. So stress helps you survive. It does. Right. right yeah. If you were a cave person and you got attacked by a bear, you want stress because you yes. got to run away from that. <laughs> right. You don't have time to digest your food. You're you're running full speed away from that bear. So. Yeah. This is a naturally conditioned response. The problem we're seeing is that people are stressed all the time. Mm -hmm. And so chronic stress can have lots of effects on the body. Um, so what kind of things are we talking about? You can imagine if your blood pressure is up all the time, you can affect your cardiovascular health. If your heart rate is going fast all the time, it can affect the structure and pump function of your heart. Your immune system can go down. There's a new study that just came out. Uh, they studied 2,500 people and found that elevated cortisol levels which is the main stress hormone, can lead to obesity and the and uh, duration of obesity. So it's harder to take weight off if you're chronically stressed out. More prone to getting things like diabetes. Um, people who have chronic tension headaches from stress can have neck and back problems. So let's talk about that yeah. because that's where I see it uh, mostly in both myself and, and people that I talk to is they're tight. Like if you go up behind them and put your hands on their shoulder and your thumbs on their shoulders and rub a little bit, they're yeah. like, oh. Yeah. Oh, you, do you, do you, is that where it starts? When yeah. You start holding oh, what a, I'm so in? glad you brought that up because, you know, the – one of the ways that we love to treat stress management uh, at UCLA is we look at, at more of a holistic kind of approach. Right. You know, it's easy to take medication sometimes, but things like acupressure, which you're describing, is a much healthier and safer way of treating stress. So yes, we carry a lot of stress in our backs, and so that's why it feels so good when you press on them. One easy thing your listeners can do is if you look at that little fat pad right in between your thumb and your right. index finger, and you just press hard onto that. You are activating these traditionally known acupressure points that relieve stress and anxiety, um, help with insomnia. So that's just one point. You can try it on your own at home. Um, but acupressure is an incredibly intricate system, um, and that, and along with a, a lot of other types of holistic modalities, can really help treat stress. So let's talk about holistic modalities, yeah. because a lot of times it's the chair you're sitting in. Absolutely. Ergonomics stand, is huge. Stand-up desk versus a desk that you're always sitting in a regular chair. Yeah. People, um, this movement towards sending desks is really taken off. Yeah. You burn more calories. You're more active. Um, it helps with posture, right? You talk about uh, people who have chronic leg, leg pain, um, hip pain, 
inner thigh pain, it's because of the way you're sitting. And it helps with energy. Absolutely. Your own personal energy in life. It does. It does. And that, it really can help uh, combat the chronic effects of stress. We talk about exercise, motion, right? Exercise has been known for decades to, to, to really reduce stress and prevent stress. You talk about, you read books written by CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. I mean, these people have incredible amounts of stress. They're responsible for thousands of jobs, li livelihoods. Um, a lot of them are runners. Mm -hmm. And the, one of the biggest things I get in the office is people say, you know what, I, I don't have time to exercise. I'm so stressed out, I have so many things to do, and now you're giving me an extra homework to go home and exercise. <laughs> Interestingly, a lot of new research has been done on things like high-intensity interval training, mm -hmm. right? Quick 10-minute workout, you get your heart rate up really fast. So let's talk about that at the workplace. Yeah. I love that conversation. Um, I have a good friend that works downtown, right? Mm -hmm. um, perhaps taking the elevator down and then the stairs up. Yeah. Because when you take the stairs down, it can be hard on your knees. But when you take it up, you're actually stretching your leg up and going up, and your heart rate's going to get elevated, and you're going to be wide awake. Right. You might not need that extra cup of coffee that I always need, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's any way you can incorporate more exercise into your day. If that means taking, an, uh, taking the stairs on the elevator, I'm all for it. it means There's nothing above the 20th floor, right? Well, you know. I mean, <laughs> depending, on, depending on how I mean, You might be able to go 20 <laughs> floors. Now, you look like you're in pretty good shape. Um, but, yeah, but it's, even, it's that type of thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, even yeah. getting up people who have desk jobs, right, getting up, set an alarm on your phone every hour, get up, stretch, walk around for five minutes. It allows you to combat that chronic fatigue in your legs, makes you more ergonomic, prevents pain down the line. Yeah, love that. So let's get into some of the more, um, the bigger stress, man. We only have a minute left, sure. but um, chronic pain. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, does it start slowly where you just release certain parts of it? Does it start uh, in a pool? Tell me different ways in which you rehab people to to reduce the stress and reduce the pain in their life. So chronic pain is a, is a big issue. Um, you know, uh, uh, there's a big, um, there's an, uh, an epidemic, I'd say, in the United States of using pain medications to treat chronic pain. I think a more uh, safe way of doing it is using things like exercise, meditation, yoga, acupuncture, tai chi. These are all things that have little to no side effects. Well, and you know what I love sure. about yoga? Yeah. Is it's mental and it's physical. Absolutely. Yeah, so you hit, you hit two with one. Absolutely. Huh? It allows you to really decompress. Mm -hmm. So you are not only relieving the mental anguish of stress, but also whatever physical kind of manifestations there are. Yeah. Um, last question, and Please. we only have a minute, on supplements. Mm -hmm. um, I've always taken supplements. Um, I don't have a problem with supplements, but there are many different kinds of supplements because I just don't get enough fruits and vegetables in every single meal. Yeah. Your, your thoughts towards that? Supplements are fine. As long as you talk to your doctor about what you're taking. Um, the big risk about supplements, one, is that there's pretty limited oversight in terms mm -hmm. of there's no FDA oversight. Now, why, why is that? I, I, I always say it's not FDA approved or it's not looked at. It's just the industry has never been looked at by the government? Yeah, well, the FDA focuses more on prescription medications, right? So they're testing for safety and efficacy of prescription-type medications. Over-the-counter supplements are not held to that level of scrutiny. Mm -hmm. So there could be side effects that, you, that we're just not sure of. Um, important talk to your doctor about what you are interested in taking and if there are any possible interactions with other medications that you're taking. I want to ask you one last question because we're really out of time, yeah. but it has, has to do with sucralose. It has to do with um, engineered sugar. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm opposed to them from what I understand. It's, it's negative for your energy, but I love a diet soda every once in a while. I love to, you know, maybe swing in and have a hamburger and Diet Coke. Yeah. Tell me about supplements, sugar supplements. Not sugar, but the actual um, engineered sugars. Well, I'd say in general, the least processed foods you could eat, the better. Okay. Closer to the more natural product. Um, a diet soda every once in a while is okay. Moderation really is key. Um, and so every once in a while, if you want to have your Coke, that's fine. Um, but in general, for a healthier lifestyle, the less processed foods you eat, the better. And the same thing with the, with the sugars. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, those who want to reach out to, uh, I'm going to say this one more time. It's Mu Fadal, right? Yes, right. Fadal da -hodwa. Da -hodwa. Perfect. <laughs> Doctor from UCLA, how can I reach out to you? Uh, so we're over at uh, Santa Clarita Primary Care. Um, we're excited to take on new patients and uh, kind of approach them with a more holistic uh, sort of uh, medical philosophy. Thanks for coming in. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you for having us. Absolutely.